Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in this video, we're going to be finishing off the level editor series. If we run our game where we previously left off, you can see we can add instances into our game and also some lighting. We finished off the previous episode with adding the tile map editing features. We can also add and delete them wherever necessary. Now, to finish everything off, we're going to have to work on the saving and loading of our levels. For the saving and loading, I'll be using a plugin called S-Save. If you aren't already familiar with this plugin, check out the description below for a full video on how to set it up and get the plugin used within GameMaker. It's extremely powerful and very simple to use. Now with that being said, let's take a look at the scripts folder and let's open up the S-Save config level file. This is going to tell our SA plugin how we want to save each level. For this video, I'm going to be separating out the instances, the lighting, and the tile map to keep things simple. You can definitely combine the instances and lighting together if you wish, but I'll leave that up to you. First, we're going to have to use a function called add value that comes with the plugin as save. We are going to supply a variable name such as instances. Next, we need to have the type and we'll make this type an array. The final parameter that we're going to be using is going to be the default. And for that, we'll just use a blank array. Now that we've set up this variable, let's do the same thing, but let's use one for lights and then use one for tile maps. Now that's it. We have all the configuration done for the S save plugin. Again, you can check out the video in the description below for a more in-depth review. But for now, let's close this file and let's open up the object debug and also the object in a game. Inside the create event for the init game object, you can see we have a global variable called level. This is the variable that we're going to be using to save and load our levels into the game. It's going to act as which level we're on so we can just change it on the fly. Now let's close this and switch over to the object debug. We're going to open up both the create and the step event, and now let's maximize the window. We're going to be creating a new window for the save. Let's scroll down and create that window right underneath the if statement. So right before our original position, let's bring this down and create a new window by adding a UI.WindowPosition. We'll position this window at 10 on the x-coordinate and 16 on the y-coordinate. Now we can finally create the window by using UI.Window and we'll just call this level tools. For the callback function, we need a way to change the levels. We'll start off by setting the global.level variable equal to a new UI input underscore int. We want to pass in the text of level number, and then we'll finally pass in the global variable. This is all we need to do to set up this particular text box. Next, we're going to need two buttons. Let's create the first button and we'll have it say save level. For the callback, we'll come back to this and we'll fill it in later. We're also going to need a button for loading the level. And again, we'll just use a quick skeleton function here. Now that we've created a new window, let's also go down and push our original window down. Let's set the X and Y positions to 10 and 256. Now to make sure everything's running correctly, let's just quickly run our game and make sure that when we switch to debug mode, we have two windows appearing and everything looks good, so let's work on the saving aspect. Inside the callback function, we're going to be using a function that exists on this particular object only, and it's within the create event. And now let's switch over to the create event, and let's scroll down until we get to it, and we'll work on this new function. First, we're going to create a variable to hold onto our save file. We will be using the ssave plugin to get our save file, so we're going to have to pass in the configuration that we set up before. The next thing we need to pass in is going to be the file name that we want to save it as. And for this, we'll just use our global variable. Now to keep things simple, I'm going to be using three variables to hold on to our instances, our lighting, and also our tile map. Each of these variables is just going to be an array. And now because I'm separating the instances and the lighting, I'm going to be using a variable to tell my function what instances we want to save. Because I kept all these in the same array, I'm going to be splitting them up. So to do this, let's create a new variable called objects. And this objects variable is only going to hold the object box and the object barrel inside of it. This is where you would have any objects that you would let the player create, you would place inside here. Now we're going to have to loop through all of these objects and then grab the instances for each one of the objects. We can do this with a simple for loop. Now within this for loop, we're either going to be looking for the object box or the object barrel. So now we can loop through all of the instances within our room and only grab that specific instance. 
We'll store each one of these instances into a temporary variable called instance. Next, what we'll want to do is use an array push to push all the information that we require to recreate this object in the level into our array. This array is going to be using a struct to hold all the information. For our instances, we don't need much information because they're very basic. Let's have it contain which object it needs to create. And we'll also store the X and Y positions of our instance. And then finally, the depth as well. Again, if you want to store more information, such as how many hit points an object has or how much ammo is in a box, this is where you will do it. But for now, these are the basics that I need to get started. Once we have everything done here, let's tell ssave that we want to save this array into our file. This isn't actually saving to the file yet, it's just setting all the data that we need. And now that we're done our instances, let's actually do the lighting. We'll make a quick comment right up here to signify that this is the instances. And down here, we'll make a comment for the lights. We pretty much have to do the same thing as above, except I only have one lighting object, so I can get rid of the one for loop. What we're going to do is loop through the entire level and only grab the instances for the simple light object. Again, we'll store this into a temporary variable called instance, and then after that, we'll push the lighting instance into our array. We'll be pushing a struct just like before. However, we also need to store the scale and the alpha into the system because these are separate variables. Now that we've looped through all the lights, just like before, let's tell ssave about the array that we want to save into the file. Finally, we're going to have to handle the tile map. This one is a tiny bit different, but it's not very difficult. First, we need to grab the layer that our tile map exists on. Remember that this is TS underscore collision. It refers to the tile map layer within the room. If I remove this layer, you can see that all the tiles disappear. So this is the one I want to collect because I'm drawing on it. Back in the code, we also need to grab the tile map itself. So to grab the tile map ID, we'll be basing it on the layer above. Now we need to loop through our entire room and grab each tile that exists on our tile map. We'll start off by using a for loop to go through the width of the tile map. The next for loop will do the same, but we're going to be using the height. Now, just like before, we're going to be pushing everything into an array with a struct. We're going to be storing the X position, which is set to W, and the Y position, which is set to H. The final data that we need is going to be using a tile map get. We're going to pass in the map ID and the X and Y position. This will return the tile data that is at that specific spot. Now, just like before, we have to tell S save about the array, so we'll add that in. And then finally, at the very end, we need to tell S save to actually save the level. We can do this by referencing our save file variable and just calling the save function. Now let's run our game and see if we have any errors. Let's make a change by adding a light into our room and let's also load up the tile map editor and let's get rid of this little corner here. Now let's try and save our level as level one and see what happens. And as you can see, we have our first error. So let's go back and see what we did wrong. After some initial searching off camera, right here we have our underscore scale variable, but let's check to see what we use on the object light simple. If I open up the create event, you can see for this particular object, I didn't include the underscores. So let's fix these up when we're saving the level. And now that that's all fixed, let's load it up and try again. Once again, we'll add a light into our game. And just like before, we're going to change the tile map as well. Now let's try and hit the save level and you can see we didn't get any errors. And we also have a notification at the bottom telling us that the file was saved successfully. Now that means we're gonna to have to work on loading the level. So we'll switch back to the object debug and in the step event underneath the load level button, we're gonna call our load level function that we're just going to write. Now, just like before, this function is found in the create event. We'll scroll all the way down. You can see that we have the load level function here with an alarm set. Now, the reason that we're using an alarm in GameMaker is because GameMaker needs one frame to run the destroy events before we can load our new level. You wouldn't need to do this if you weren't destroying any of the instances, but because this is just a quick level editor, we need to allow for one frame to happen. Now, before that one frame happens, let's remove all of our selectable objects from our scene. 
First, we'll loop through all the selectable objects, and then for every selectable object, we'll just destroy the instance. Now remember that any of these selectable objects are things like the boxes, barrels, and simple lights. Once they have been destroyed, alarm zero will be called one frame after, so let's switch over to the alarm zero code. So to make this work, we're going to have to do the reverse of what we did for our save file. First, let's load the ssave plugin and tell it that we want to load the file based off of our global variable. Our plugin will take care of loading the file, but we need to store our three variables into some temporary variables. Again, we're going to have an instances, we'll have our lighting, and then our tile map in each separate variable. Also remember that the variables inside the quotes are coming from our ssave config level, which is our script file. Now that our plugin has loaded all this information, we just need to regenerate all the objects. First, let's start with the instances. So let's run a for loop through all of the instances within our array. We will create an instance based off the instances array and the current index of i. Using instance create depth, we'll take the x position and also the y position, and we'll include the depth that is all found within our array. To finish off the command, we're going to pass in the object that we told it to create, and now we can generate the objects on the fly. Now we'll move on to regenerating the lighting. Again, we're going to loop through the lights found in the array, and this time we'll store a reference to the instance that we're creating within a variable. First, let's create the light just like we did above. However, instead of using the object because we didn't save it, I'm only using one light, so I'm going to be telling it to create the simple light object instead. Now, for this particular instance, we also had alpha and scale, so let's make sure that we set them both. Once that's all done, all we need to do is regenerate the tile map. Just like before, we need to grab the tile map layer and also the map ID. The first thing I want to do is make sure that we clear the entire tile map. Once our tile map is cleared, we can redraw the tile map based off of our data. Again, we're going to loop through the tile map and we're going to call the tile map set command and pass in the map ID, the data, which is the tile index, and also our tile map X and Y coordinates. Now with that, we should be able to actually load the level. So let's try it out. Let's keep everything the same and click the load level you can see that we're almost there. Our map disappeared, but we didn't load any of the objects. The reason for this is we currently don't have a level one saved anywhere within our game. So we need to track down our files. Sometimes this can be a little tricky just because of how GameMaker works. I did some searching around and I found my original save files inside my app data folder and then underneath local, GameMaker Studio 2, and finally GMS2 temp. Right now, this will have all of the currently run projects, and you can see I've run our simple editor a bunch here. Now within this folder structure, any time that I save one of my levels, one of these folders is going to have the level that I'm looking for. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this file, and then I'm going to open up my included files for the project, and inside the data files, I'm going to paste it inside there. This means that any time that I run my game or I share my game, this level is going to be saved and it will be passed down to the user. Now that I've included my level, let's run the game and let's also see if we can load this up. If I click the load button, you can see that we have the light and we also have the change to the tile map. Now just remember that the way that things are, if I change the tile map here and then save it again as level one, the file that we copied in there is the one that's going to be used. So if I run my game again and I load up level one, you can see that we don't have the current updates and it reverts back to the original. That means that when you're running it in the editor, you would have to find your file again and copy it in. To get around this, let's actually add the working directory into the ssave plugins save directory. Once we have done that and we run our game and we load up our level or create a new level, we get the full path here in the output. This just makes it easier to copy the path and grab our new levels and save them into our data files. So let's actually create a second level here. Let's load up the first level to see what we have. 
And now let's make a few edits to the tile map. We're going to make it so that the player is going to be stuck on the right. We'll also add one new light into our game. We're going to save this as level two. And now, just like before, we could copy the full path and we could find this level file and copy it into our data files. Now that I have two levels, I can close my game and run it again. And these two levels will be automatically added anytime our game is ran. Anytime that I package it up and share it with another user, they'll also get these two levels. I can use our object debug and I can load up level one. And if I load up level two, you can see that they switch. So this means that we're now able to load up a number of different maps and you can start generating your own maps to your heart's content. S-Save does also protection in terms of encryption. So if you don't want people messing around with your levels, you could also encrypt them. And so with that, I hope you've enjoyed this level editor series. There's actually a ton more work that you can do, but this should be a really good starting point for you. I'll leave it up to you to take it over and add your own individual flair into it. I'd also like to take a moment to thank all my Patreon supporters for their continued support. If you would like to help support me and get access to all the project files for this series and multiple others, you can check out my Patreon page in the description below. And also, a special shout out to my Patreon supporters in no particular order. Josh, Helna, 39 Digits, Pseudo, Micah, Matthew, Midnight, Game Maker Community, Juju B84 and Victor. Once again, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.